we're going to get into some um, informative content that you can use in your breeding program or whatever it is that you want to be successful. Maybe you need to be more successful in getting in shape. Maybe you need to be more successful in your business. Maybe you need to be more successful in your relationship with your friends and family, loved ones, or cre your creator. We're going to talk about some strategies that I use in my breeding program that actually I use in other areas of my life that help me to be successful. And I am not good at everything, but there are some things that I'm very good at. And I've done a great job with my children. My daughter, she graduated with a 4.0, went to college on scholarship, and has, now is getting promoted left and right in her career. I'm very proud of her. My son is going to graduate valedictorian in his high school. I'm very proud of him. How many people can say that, that their son is going to graduate number one in their class? Um, they both have committed their life with to Christ, and I am I'm very pleased with my children and hey they're not perfect by any means but they're at least they have a foundation all right so I use the same procedures with my children I use it with my dogs and we're going to get to some of that stuff on the board in just a minute but before I do I want to make sure I don't leave out something that I wrote down because like I said this is something I spend a lot of time on and I'm trying to give you some good advice here so my apologies for reading in my video, and if you want to copy this, let me know. I'll send it to you. Before one truly can understand protection, they must first understand the truth and also prioritize what really matters. What saved me from being uh, making the same mistakes that my brothers and sisters made, which unfortunately they made a lot of mistakes because my father did not give them the guidance that they need. What saved me was being drawn into animals and nature. I loved interacting and learning about both and this helped me develop the skill to not only pursue education in these fields but also i developed that art sense of interacting with it by just being around it so much um, i learned the strengths and behavior of how animals survived now by spending that time in that environment i learned the art side of animals and nature but because I was truly drawn to it, I sought professional education as well. And that helped me with the scientific side of animal behavior and genetics. And as a result of this, the American Sentinel program began. But when it began, it began in concept only. It did not be begin with a finished product. I had a lot of work to do. And I'm sure I'm going to have a lot more work to do in the future. Um, a finished product will only stay the best when you continually improve it. Because as soon as you sit down to relax, somebody else is working. So you got to work all the time and continually make that, prog that product better. And it's not just about winning here. It's about the pursuit of excellence. It's about the pursuit of mastery. And when you stop that, but the, the field continues to develop, you're getting left behind. You're not pursuing excellence and you're not pursuing mastery. So it's not about the end product as much as it is about how you play the game. Now, by paying attention to others, this does not mean that we should give up our goals to accommodate theirs. But we should interact with them and see what methodologies they're using so we can sharpening our, sharpen our own skills. Now, uh, in doing this and in interacting with others... Don't be afraid to speak the truth on what it is that you believe because you're going to encounter people that disagree with you, but you're going to also encounter people that have similar goals and similar interests. And those people will help you develop a team, which will have a synergistic effect in your efficiency and your productivity. Don't be enslaved to falsehoods and lies. Uh, learn to recognize these lies in your pursuit of truth. Because when you identify truth, the truth will set you free and you'll be more effective in obtaining your goals. And with that said, let's hit this board and learn some science or methodologies and strategies that you can use to improve. So you have a, a vision, a goal of what it is that you want. And you also have a location, your presence, where you are now, where you are now. How are you going to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And let's say that you've been doing this for years and years and years and you have not obtained your goal, okay? So maybe you have been successful in some ways, but there's been a divergent, a separation 
of where you are and where you want to be. You just thought you would have been there by now and you're not. So why not? Well, this is an evolution. This is in science. This is called divergent evolution. Okay. Divergent selection. And what has happened is there, it's not the distance here that you need to focus on. Instead, the reason there's this gap here is because of what you did differently. It's the behavioral change that you need to target. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I said there was going to be some things that we're going to discuss that I don't necessarily condone or agree with, but irrelevant. Let's look at the American Pitbull Terrier and the American Staffordshire Terrier. So let's put the American Staffordshire Terrier, which is present today, and let's look at the American Pitbull Terrier, which is different. These are game dogs. These are show dogs. They're different. A lot of people think that uh, the American Staffordshire Terrier is the same thing as the American Pitbull Terrier because they had the same ancestors, okay? Back here was the original population, and they both go back to the same dogs at one time. It was like 1932 or 34, I believe. I don't have that in front of me. But anyway, what happened is a guy named Leitner looked at some dogs, and he had some uh, dogs that were matched. And over time, the AKC is down here. And now, the, a lot of the UKC dogs are down here as well because they changed their direction. But originally, the UKC dogs were up here, and also we have the ADBA. So the ADBA has the true game dogs today because what was the difference? These dogs were bred for to look like they could do it, and these dogs were bred to do it. So the action of testing is what separated the individuals. But it wasn't actually the testing, to be honest with you. In fact, I need to emphasize that. It wasn't the testing. It was finding the individuals that excelled at the test. That's what mattered. Finding the individuals that excelled at the test is what separated the ones that looked like they could do it from the ones that could do it. Now, you can do the same thing that hurt happened with the Amstaff and the American Pitbull Terrier, or your goals between where you are in your business, where you are in your relationship. You can look at this gap and say, what is the cause of this gap? If you focus on the gap and the difference between the two of now and there, like poor and wealthy, or uh, looks like it can do it, can do it, a lot of people focus on that, that gap, and that's a mistake. Don't focus on the difference between the two. Focus on what produced that difference. It's the behavior that mattered. Now, let's go back to the pit bull. Like I said, the pit bull was bred to win in combat. Now, if you're breeding a protection dog, you need a dog that can win in combat. A lot of people say, oh, well, that means I need to compete in combat. Yes and no. I'm not condoning the matching of animals, okay? I'm not condoning that. What I'm saying is you, it's not the match that made the dog better. It's the ability to succeed in that match. Now, how are you going to recognize that ability? You have to learn animal behavior. A lot of people won't know the result until it's over and it's in their face because they never could tell what was going on in front of their own eyes. They cannot read animal behavior. A person that is good at studying animal behavior will see the dogs that are showing signs of I enjoy combat versus the ones that don't enjoy combat. And when I'm training a protection dog, I know if a dog is going to do well or not as I proceed. And this is why training matters. Training does matter and training doesn't matter. Training will help you identify the individuals that have the traits needed to excel if you understand animal behavior. If you don't understand animal behavior, then training will not always work. A lot of people will go to a trainer and say, hey, my dog um, is not really delivering as well as I would like. I need your help to get this dog to where it needs to be. And that trainer will use their knowledge of animal behavior to cover up the holes in your dog but you didn't change the dog's genetics. And some people might say, well, if that dog was trained and conditioned to do it and then it did it, then great. Except for there's a difference here. That trainer knows your dog doesn't have it. And since that dog doesn't have it, he's not gonna be tested 
as if he has it. He's going to be cultivated and always given an easier task. And because of that, you got this gap. There's two parts here. Genetics and behavior. It is the genetics that produced this behavior uh, that caused this gap. So you need to find out and you need to learn animal behavior so you can find and identify the individuals that ha have the right genetics because this genetics impacts that, the breeding selections. The, it's so important that you use the right individuals. If you don't use the right individuals, but you train and train and train and make these individuals look good, you're going to fall on your face. You're going to fall on your face because you're going to invest in these dogs that really don't have the genetics because you wanted to breed what was in the neighborhood instead of go find out the best in the country or the best in the world. This is why I am blessed. I did what I had to do to find the individuals with the right genetics required to excel at the tasks that I was going to ask from my dogs. And I want my dogs to excel at hog work and protection work. In truth, I really am more interested in protection work. That's what I do. Hunting is a novelty for me. I don't have to have it. Now, maybe there'll be a day that I do have to have it, but because we can get food at the grocery store if we need to. But what I need to do the most is protect and provide for my family. So protection was the number one criteria in a family environment. All right. I'm not talking about guarding um, a business, although a lot of the sensory dogs that we use in protection work can do that. I'm not talking about breeding dogs for sport, although a lot of our more socially balanced dogs can do that. I'm talking about my number one goal is protection work. But we still need dogs with very high prey drive as well because prey drive is where you get the dogs that excel at the training. So while it's important to be able to perform at this gap, this difference, what's really the most important is identifying the traits required to perform. This difference between non-performers and performers is not what you need to focus on. Now you might think, what do you mean that's not what I need to focus on? I need to train. I need to see those dogs excel at protection work. No, you don't. As a breeder, what you need is the traits needed to excel. Now, this is why you need to understand behavior. If you want to cur uh, separate the curves from the game dogs, you don't need to just match your dogs. Okay, I'm not condoning that activity. What you need is an ability to distinguish the difference in the behavior and the traits between the curves and the game dogs. So you need to understand behavior so you can capture the genes that are responsible for producing that behavior. As a result, the test that you need to do is not just the training. The test is really to distinguish between the ones that excel from the ones that don't. So don't... While there is value in making sure that you don't make a decision prematurely, you definitely don't want to call in an individual that's going to be great. So you always want to make sure that dog has had the proper environment to reach its full potential. But once you do that, you then need to also identify, does this dog have these traits naturally or is it faked? Just like people can fake it till you make it, so can dogs. So the one thing that I like to do is to make sure I can read the animal for what it is. Focusing on the training is important to make sure that you have read the behavior correctly. But don't just look at the bottom line, so to speak, the end result. Focus on what it took to get there and then make that difference way back in the beginning when choosing the right dog. Don't just breed to something because it's available. You need to focus on what it took to get there. I'm blessed to have Frankie Bomp and also the Sorrels dogs that we have because these dogs have a proven lineage of excelling and bringing the traits that I was looking for to bring the American Sentinel where it needs to be. Our roots go back to the Sorrels bloodline.